Hi guys, it's me, Chancellor HD, and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today, with Nib, we're going to be doing some early 2021 predictions before pre-season testing. Now, we've done this in the past couple years, and it's been quite good to do, and I think in one of the years, uh, we've actually, or maybe I was actually more accurate um, with my prediction before testing than I was after testing. Can't remember exactly the year, but... Yeah, we've done this for the past couple of years. It's been quite fun to do, and I think it'll be interesting to see, again, what prediction, whether the one after testing or before testing, is more accurate. We're going to get into the teams and just really based off gut feeling how we think they're going to do in 2021 in a season that is sure to be very, very exciting. And we'll just start right off and go into the first team, Mercedes. We're not going to spend that long on Mercedes because, let's be honest, we know what's going to happen with them. Lewis Hamilton will win his eighth world title and Mercedes are going to win yet another Constructors' Championship. I don't see anyone competing with them. They're going to win another 17, 18 races. It's just going to be another year of Mercedes, dom of Mercedes dominance. I don't really think... Anyone out there can really argue with that. Um, Nib, have you got anything really to add when it comes to Mercedes? Uh, yeah, well, it's quite funny you say that we've managed to get quite a few of these, right? Well, I remember, I think it was 2019, I predicted Vettel would win the World Championship, and I was just a little bit off there, I think. So, yeah, uh, well, with Mercedes, well, I think we all expect Lewis Hamilton to become an eight-time World Champion, of course, only signing a one-year deal with Mercedes, so who knows, it could be his final year in the sport, but yeah, of course, uh, rec recording this before, Mercedes have uh, launched their car, revealed their car, so obviously we don't really know what the true performance will be and all that, but you know, James Allison's a fantastic uh, technical director, and you'd certainly expect him to uh, produce quite a strong car that should win many, many, many a Grand Prix, and secure another Constructors title for Mercedes and another Drivers Championship for Lewis Hamilton. Right, now they're done. Let's go on to Red Bull. Now, Red Bull in 2020 were, I think, quite disappointing considering what we were expecting from them. We were expecting Red Bull maybe not to win the championship or have the best car on the grid, but we thought Red Bull would be close enough to give, with Max Verstappen, Mercedes a regular uh, challenge at, say, most Grand Prix, but it just never happened. Yet again, they start the season off way too slow. And considering how they, again, they start every season, just not close enough to the Silver Arrows, I just don't see how Red Bull again, can possibly compete with Mercedes. I mean, yeah, maybe by the end of the season, they might be able to close the gap a bit. But if they're not going to be there at the start of the season, you know, close pace-wise with Mercedes, then it's they're just going to be routed. Uh, Max Verstappen, I'm sure, will have another great season. Sergio Perez, very excited to see what he does. I think he will be better than Albon when he was at Red Bull, of course. And I think when Gasly was at Red Bull, I think Perez will be better than what Gasly did. I don't think, though, we can expect Sergio Perez to, you know, beat Max Verstappen or anything like that. I think he can get closer, but realistically, Max Verstappen is still going to be the clear number one in that team in terms of results in 2021. But yeah, for Red Bull, it's going to be basically the same season. I hope they're closer, but... They've disappointed us, you know, in the last two or three years where we really thought if they start the season off well, they could really be, you know, contenders. They've just disappointed. Um, so, yeah, I think Red Bull, honestly, in 2021, it's just going to be a replica of what happened in 2020. Um, but, Nib, do you, do you see Red Bull being any different in 2021 compared to 2020? Or do you think it would just be like I think, just as it was? Um, well, I think we go into every Formula One season saying, oh, you know, we'll think Red Bull will be a little bit closer in uh, well, the upcoming season, which uh, I think they will be. I think they will be closer purely because I think they have a much stronger driver lineup. Of course, that second Red Bull seat is kind of a poisoned chalice almost 
with uh, the second driver, of course, against Verstappen, not quite having uh, the exact same car. Although I think with Sergio Perez, Rebel will be a lot more trusting in giving Sergio Perez uh, a, a pretty similar car to Max Verstappen. And I think you know, Perez will be able to extract more from the car. That's why I'm not quite um, concerned about them perhaps, you know, being challenged by McLaren. But of course, Red Bull historically very poor to start the season and then they gain and get closer to Mercedes. But with quite a bit of the car being carried over from last season, um, hopefully Red Bull can make it entertaining at the front and make it a pretty good scrap. And I don't think they'll be challenging for world titles or anything like that, but certainly for a lot more race wins than what they were in 2020. I'd expect Verstappen to uh, to certainly still be one of the best drivers on the grid, of course. I think he's pretty much there with Hamilton for the most part, but it's going to be interesting to see how Perez and Verstappen line up against each other, that's for sure. Yeah, it will, and I think we'll get a, a, I think a very good idea of how good Sergio Perez is, um, because if you look at Perez, he hasn't really had a top teammate really since, I'd say, Jensen Button, who was still, I think, pretty good in 2013. It's just the car was letting him down. And since then, he's had, you know, Hulkenberg and Ocon and Stroll, who are good drivers, but, they, you know, they're midfield drivers at the end of the day. Uh, so it'll be good to see, you know, with Perez at basically the peak of his powers, how good he really is. And I think he'll surprise people. He won't be beating Max Verstappen, I don't think, but he'll definitely be surprising people um, in certain races. I think he'll definitely get some podiums in 2021. And as long as the car's reliable enough in terms of you know the grip compared to last year's car, which was very unstable, don't see why Perez won't have a good season. Um, but yeah, Red Bull. I think they'll be about the same. Um, hopefully, though, a bit stronger. Next up, though, we're going to go into Ferrari. Now, Ferrari were very poor last season, as we've you know got into, and they should be better this season. But how much better are they going to be? Now, I'm very pessimistic, and I have been for the last couple of years when it comes to this team. I've always thought that the hype around them has been a bit false at times. Um, and I've not believed it as much as other people. Um, and when it comes to 2021, I do think they'll be better. But I don't think Ferrari are just going to shoot straight up into the top three. I, I just don't see that because, you know... Yeah, they'll improve, but what about McLaren? What about Aston Martin or Alpine with Fernando Alonso returning to the sport? We need to see what they're like as well. But I think Ferrari will improve. It's just, will they improve enough on what they had in 2020? And also, how are those other you know upper midfield teams doing compared to them? I think, though, they'll be hovering around third or fourth in the constructors. During 2021, to be honest, considering it's Ferrari, I do hope that they can get back into the top three because at the end of the day, we do need Ferrari at, you know, the top of Formula One or, you know, in the top two positions, preferably, because I think, you know, we need that name up there. And they are definitely, when they get things right with all the resources they have, they are capable of definitely winning um, in this sport. Yeah, I think this season, Third or fourth, it'll be close between them and, you know, McLaren, Aston Martin, hopefully Alpine as well. Nib, with Ferrari, how how much do you think they will improve on 2020? Do you think it'll be, you know, an expected improvement or do you think they're going to be just massively better than any of us expected? Uh, I think they're going to be massively better than what you perhaps expect. You know, you are the you are the king of uh, well, I wouldn't say the king actually. I'd say you're you're very pessimistic when it comes to Ferrari. I think um, you know one, you're one of their strongest critics, certainly that I am aware of. Um, yeah, I think that's that's more, that's a bit better put. But you know, they're certainly 
going to have to improve the engine and, you know, everything coming out of Marinello says that they have improved the engine because, of course, they had to throw that engine together really last season after, of course, their illegal engine that they had in 2019. Uh, they said they've improved and reduced the drag on the car. They've improved the aero. So, you know, I think they're going to be not struggling, you know, battling Williams like they were at Mugello. I certainly think they're going to be a lot more towards the front of the midfield, battling much more with McLaren and fighting for podiums um, quite a bit more often, even though somehow Leclerc got two podiums in three races or whatever it was at the start of the season. So uh, I think Ferrari will improve for sure. And of course, it'll be very interesting to see our Carlos Sainz and I feel, I feel like it's gone a little bit under the radar, really. Like, I don't think there's too much pressure on Carlos Sainz. I don't know about you, but it, is, it isn't, hasn't been like this hyped up move, like, whoa, oh, Carlos Sainz at Ferrari, you know? It's just been like, oh, cool, mm. he's he's at Ferrari now. Um, So it'll be really interesting to see how Carlos Sainz does against Charles Leclerc. You know, we saw how he did against Verstappen at, at a Toro Rosso back in the day, and he was not that bad whatsoever. Um, yes, Verstappen beat him, and and Sainz has certainly improved much since then. So I think it will be pretty close between him and Leclerc. And if he can certainly be on Charles Leclerc's level, that will leave Ferrari in a very good, uh, very good position. Because of course, whilst Leclerc was getting good performances last season, of course Sebastian Vettel was massively struggling with the car down in the in the bottom of the midfield. So I think Carlos Sainz really could be the key to how Ferrari do this season. And of course, we've seen over the last few years with McLaren, how key Carlos Sainz has been in scoring critical points in, in that very tight midfield battle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, with McLaren, he was very important for them. I just want to ask, though, uh, with Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc as a driver lineup, and um, one, who would you say, who, you know, who do you think will win that battle? And also, do you think there'll be any clashes on track, such as, you know, what Leclerc and Vettel had in Interlagos? Do you think there'll be anything like that? Um, but yeah, when it comes to the, you know, the rivalry, do you think Carlos Sainz could really go in there and beat Leclerc in his first season as a Ferrari driver? Uh, no, I don't. I think, look, I think he could over the time, the second half of the season, start to get really close to Leclerc, but I don't expect Carlos Sainz to go right into Ferrari and challenge Leclerc immediately. I don't think they'll have, like, on-track issues with Vettel. Of course, Vettel has a history of having on-track issues with his teammates. Of course, Weber back in, well, Turkey, 2010. I've had to bring that up painfully. Um, you know, and Carlos Sainz has never really had that. Yes, he had his clashes with Verstappen back at Toro Rosso, but that, that got quite heated, and there was a bit more of a backstory to that. Um, so I don't think that that... I don't think there'll be many issues with uh, with Leclerc. You know, science is pretty level-headed. Leclerc is obviously developing as a driver, um, but I expect Leclerc to be the team leader and to certainly be leading the Ferrari charge uh, for 2021. Yeah, I think, I mean, Leclerc, I still think he is the, maybe not the clear number one at that team, but I would say he is still the, you know, he's more of a focus for that team as the, priority driver um and it you know it does depend on what carlos science does in his first season as to whether science will get a bit more attention from the team than maybe we're expecting or everyone's expecting um i think with science though i think i think people will be surprised I, i'm not saying he will beat leclerc but i think it will be very close i wouldn't be surprised if he beat leclerc because I think he is a very, very good driver, and I think he'll, again, he'll surprise people. I think no matter who wins that battle, I think it'll be separated by probably 10 to 20 points at the end of the season. I don't see it being, you know, what it was between Leclerc and Vettel in 2020. I don't see that at all. Um, it's hard to say, though, who's going to, you know, at the moment, who is going to be the absolute uh, winner of that battle for me, because I do rate Carlos Sainz very highly. I rate Charles Leclerc highly as well, but I just think, you know, if the car is not as all over the place as it was in 2020, and Carlos Sainz can keep up the great performances he had in the last couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if he had, you know, a lot of good results and ended up 
being right there with Leclerc uh, at many points of the season, if not beating him. I will see, of course, in 2021. Now, let's go on to McLaren, who, of course, have Mercedes power for um, 2021. And a new driver, Daniel Ricciardo, replacing Carlos Sainz. Daniel Ricciardo, of course, coming from Renault. Ricciardo and Norris, what a great driver lineup that is. Not just the chemistry, but also talent-wise. I mean, they both are very good. Um, and I think, as long as the car is there, I don't see why these two aren't going to do well this season. I think McLaren's aim has got to be top three in the constructors. Will depend, as we said, uh, on Ferrari and how they improve. And as we get into the moment with Aston Martin, depend on them as well. But really, with the way this team has been progressing... With, you know, Mercedes power now, them, you know, them having it. I really don't see why this team can't continue that momentum in 2021. I think they definitely will get some podiums. And I think in 2021, and I'm going to call it now as a prediction, I think McLaren will win a race in 2021. It won't be on pure pace. It'll be one of those mental races where Mercedes have an absolute stinker. Or if it's a wet Grand Prix and loads of people have, you know, issues spinning or crashing. It'll be one of those Grand Prix. But I think McLaren are going to win a race in 2021. They really could have won one in 2020 if they were a bit luckier um, and maybe had a slight bit more pace at certain points of certain Grand Prix. You know, the Italian Grand Prix, for example. Yeah, I think McLaren, 2021, I think they'll win a Grand Prix. I don't know who it will be. I'm not going to say it's going to be Daniel Ricciardo, because I know your reaction, Nib, will just be absolutely mental if Daniel Ricciardo wins a Grand Prix. Um, but yeah, I think they'll win a Grand Prix. And I think top three in the constructors, I think, is looking strong for this team. Nib. What would you say about that? Do you think they can they get a surprise win? And would you say top three in the constructors is looking likely for them? Well, listen, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I don't want to get too excited. When you're <laughs> mentioning race wins, I'm like, oh, finally, Ricardo back battling for race victories. That would be something. That would be something to behold. But of course, they're gonna. I. How can they not be in a better position than what they were last year? They've got. Daniel Ricciardo, of course, uh, is at nine or eight time Grand Prix winner now. Um, you know, they're, they're in a very strong position, of course, with the Mercedes engine, as you mentioned. The car looks beautiful, even though it is basically still the 2020 livery. It doesn't matter. The, the car launch was good. The the good, positive environment there with, uh, with, with James Key, Zach Brown, all there, and obviously uh, Andreas Seidel there, you know, Everything, everything's good at McLaren, and hopefully that can continue into 2021. And I can see my man Daniel Ricciardo win some Grand Prix. That would be pretty special. But <laughs> realistically, they they just have to continue closing that gap to the to the, to Red Bull and uh, Mercedes. And I think I think they will do that, of course, with that Mercedes engine really helping them. And uh, certainly, you could notice a few things on their car, which which was quite a bit different in the packaging of the rear end looking a lot better and much more how a James Key would like his car to be to be packaged at the rear end. So it really is looking good for McLaren, of course. We've not had any on track um on track running, so I don't want to jinx anything, but you know, I, I certainly think that them and Ferrari will be bat will be battling for that third place in the constructors, you know, so I I'm really, really looking forward to see how McLaren do. I think it's a very key year for where they want to go in the future and over the next couple of years. It's it's really, really key that they have a very strong season and once again get that third place in the Constructors' title. Yeah, it'd be great if they could get another top three. Um, Also, getting onto the drivers, again, Ricardo and Norris, as you said, great chemistry and all of that. When it comes to the on-track stuff, do you think it'll be very close between the two, uh, like it was between Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris? And... If so, I mean, well, who do you think is going to win the battle? I would say Daniel Ricciardo because I still think Ricciardo is at his peak and I don't think Lando Norris is quite there yet. Um, but yeah, I think Ricciardo. Would you say Ricciardo as well? Well, I mean, of course I'm going to say Daniel Ricciardo is going to win the battle. <laughs> um, it's going to be very, it's going to be very bloody close. So that's for, that's for sure. You know, Lando is a quality driver and he is only getting better 
now in what he's what his third season in the sport. It feels like he's been around for forever at this stage now, Lando. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be close. It's going to be. I think it's going to be closer than what it was with Ocon and Ricardo. Certainly at the start of the season, I think it will be closer. But you've got also, also got to remember that Ricardo's coming into this uh, into this McLaren team. It might take him a little while to settle in properly and everything. Um, but yeah, I think eventually over the, over the, the duration of the season that Ricardo will be faster uh, than Norris. But I do think it will be a, a, a quite close battle between the two. Yeah, I think, you know, whether you're Norris or Ricardo, um, you know, between us two or in the comments section, I think we have to say it is going to be very close. It's going to be probably a few points separating those two. Uh, getting on to the next team, Aston Martin. I think this team has the most excitement, maybe not hype around it, but the most excitement because, again, it's the Aston Martin F1 team who honestly thought this was going to happen a few years ago. And, you know, having Sebastian Vettel possibly in a a much better run team, uh, a better car possibly, we'll have to see, in 2021, with Lance Stroll, who really did move on very well uh, in 2020 with his development. I think this team has got a lot of intrigue uh, behind it. Of course, you know, Racing Point and Force Injury in the past did very well in the past with a, a minuscule budget compared to the other teams they've comp uh, competed against and, you know, again, did very well. Fourth in the Constructors a couple times. Yeah, they've done, you know, in the past few years very well. Now they're Aston Martin and now they have a lot more money and resources to play with. I think this team... I'm not sure they're going to be, you know, right up there like they were last season up in third place, maybe, or even higher. But I do think if everything goes, say, smoothly, not well, because, you know, that's unrealistic. There is going to be some issues. But if everything runs smoothly to, uh, to start with and, you know, Sebastian settles in well and Lance continues to improve, maybe not massively, but just a bit. I think this team's a bit of a dark horse. And if they can, if you look, you know, at 2020 and where they went wrong, if they can be a bit more consistent and not so, you know, bipolar as they were in 2020, because in 2020, they would have, you know, one or two very good Grand Prix. And then, you'd, you know, they'd have a race where they were on target to score loads of points and then they would end up scoring none. Um, or, you know, very little. They need to be a bit more consistent when they are in good positions. And I think if they can be and they have a good car again, I don't see why they can't be, you know, in the top three, four in the championship if um, the car, again, is good enough. I think they will still be close with teams like McLaren and Ferrari. And it will be a mega fight again for that third in the constructors. I do think Sebastian Vettel will have a better season. I think he'll be the best driver in that team for sure. Because he is still very good. Um, let's not deny that. He is a great talent. And is still very, very quick when the car is there for him. Um, and yeah, as long as everything runs smoothly, I think this team's looking good. Uh, Nib for Aston Martin. Would you say... Do you think realistically they can get into the top three in the constructors, or do you think last year was a bit of a blip in terms of how good they were? Well, this is the thing, right? As we're going through the teams, I'm like, yes, the battle for third in the constructors is going to be between McLaren and uh, and Ferrari. But then I've just remembered that I think uh, Aston Martin are getting the rear end of the 2020 Mercedes for this season. Are they not? Um, I remember seeing an article think so. by Auto I... by Auto Sport that they're gonna have that, and I mean, it's not like you know that 2020 Mercedes was a bad car or anything. You know, it was just the greatest car of all time. <laughs> so, geez, you know, it, it's just another team to add into the mix that Aston Martin could have, of course, come third in the constructors, and really they should have come third in the constructors last year. Uh, they had the best car, the third best car for the majority of the season. They just weren't able to convert that into the points. Of course, they got those 15 points taken off for having the same brake ducts as Mercedes, basically. Um, so, yeah, I think that I think people are sleeping a little bit on Aston Martin, but knowing that they're going to have the 2020 rear end of the Merc, you know, 
I think that will help Vettel a lot. And of course, it's certainly not going to hinder Lance Stroll's performance either. So, yeah, I think I think you're right. The Aston Martin now being slept on again. You know, it's not. I don't think they're going anywhere anytime uh, anytime soon. They're not going to fall off a cliff. You know, it's not going to be like Williams when all of a sudden they were fighting for podiums in 2014, and then all of a sudden they're last on the grid. You know, Aston Martin have always got a very good team there uh, that runs the team well. They always produce a car that works well that gets points, and I think that they can really challenge once again at the top of the midfield uh, with that Mercedes engine, of course, and become and be a very good team. So, yeah, another another team that can fight for third in the constructors. It feels like every team can get third in the constructors, probably <laughs> except for Haas and Williams, but who knows? Who knows what will happen in 2021? I think it's going to be a bit of a bonkers season again, and yeah, I think by... By pre-season testing, I think we'll get a pretty good idea of where Aston Martin are going to be for for this season, of course, which uh, which is going to be underway very, very shortly. It is, and I cannot wait to see uh, yeah, the performance of all the teams in Bahrain. Uh, we'll get into the next couple teams, so I think also you could probably put into that um, area of the field that could be fighting for third in the constructors. Uh, so first off, you have uh, Alpine, F1, who of course were Renault last season. A lot of unknowns with them because they've replaced their team principal, which is a good thing because Cyril was terrible. Um, Fernando Alonso had an accident, of course, in the winter. He's returning also to the sport after being away for a couple seasons. So we don't know if he's going to be as you know quick as he was. He probably will. I don't think it'll be Michael Schumacher like where he'll just be a lot slower. I don't think it'll be like that at all. Um, also, Esteban Ocon should be stronger. But yeah, there's a bit, a few unknowns with them because we don't quite know what they're going to be and what you know, role, I guess you could say, they're going to play in the 2021 story. And then Alpha Tauri, their car, if you look at the end of last season, was very good. It was one of the stronger midfield cars. Um, and, you know, Pierre Gasly, he's driving very well. You have Yuki Tsunoda now on that car. And if he starts his Formula 1 career well, they could end up in that battle. Um, I think for Alpine, they're most likely going to be, you know, around fifth. I don't know if they will finish in the top five in the constructors, but I see them hovering really around fifth. Uh, and for Alpha Tauri, I mean, unless they really produce a really great car and have, you know, stunning pace, whether it comes to qualifying or Grand Prix pace. I think these two are most likely going to hover around, you know, fifth or sixth, maybe seventh for Alpha Tauri. Um, but, you know, if they produce a car overall that is a lot stronger and they worked on their weaknesses very well compared to 2020, I don't really think Alpha Tauri had that many weaknesses at all um, in 2020. I think overall they just need to, you know, develop the car up to date with all the other cars on the grid, uh, maybe, you know, speed it up a bit. But, you know, with the Alpine uh, team, who of course are Renault last season, they had tremendous straight line speed, but they didn't quite have a car that had enough grip. It was definitely missing something compared to the Racing Point and McLaren um, of 2020. I think that's the biggest area they've got to work on is grip. If they have enough power that they had in 2020, if they have that again in 2021, then they should be uh, a very strong outfit. Um, Nib, for these two, do you think they can feature in that battle strongly? And also with, you know, the returning Fernando Alonso, you know, what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he'll be, maybe not at the peak of his powers, but do you think he'll be, you know, regularly in the points? And, you know, just how do you think these two are going to get on? Well, of course, for Alpine, it's massive that Fernando Alonso is going to come back. You know, I don't think you could get a much better uh, replacement for Daniel Ricciardo. I don't think there's uh, many other drivers available that, that could be certainly better, if not on the level of Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, of course, Alonso, was he 40? How old's Alonso? 39? 
Well, he's very old. He's, he's that, very old yeah. anyway. I don't know. He's, I don't know Fernando's age precisely, but um, yeah, it's it's not going to hurt having Fernando Alonso, of course, a two-time world champion, and if he scored eleven more points in his career, uh, he'd be a five-time world champion, which is just remarkable to think about. Um, so yeah, for Alpine, Ocon, I, it's going to be really interesting how Esteban Ocon does because, of course, there's already these rumours that they're lining up Pierre Gasly to replace him for 2022. So Ocon really has to deliver if he wants to stay in Formula 1 and prove that he deserves to be in Formula 1, of course. At the end of last season, he was getting closer to Daniel Ricciardo and, of course, out-qualified him. Um, He out-qualified him at Abu Dhabi, but once again, he was his race pace that was really let him down. On multiple occasions, Ricciardo had to be let through because Ocon was holding him up and... You know, we're talking. His, his teammate's going to be Fernando Alonso. You know, <laughs> Fernando Alonso. Of course, he gets every absolutely everything out of that out of the car that he drives, and you know the the experience he's gained uh, since he's been out of the sport in other categories. I I think is going to help him. I don't think it's going to exactly hinder him. You know, even though Alonso's like, oh, I want to drive as much as I t- can. You know, I think Alonso will be fine. You know, I think he'll be all right. Um. So for Alpine, I expect him to be around 5th or 6th, and, and much the same for Alpha Tauri. I think they'll be around about the same as last year, you know, with Yuki Tsunoda coming in. Of course, Red Bull have got very, very high hopes for Yuki Tsunoda to see how he does. Uh, you know, I think we've got to give him time, though. You know, I don't think Red Bull... Uh, I don't think they're... I don't think they're going to make the same mistake as perhaps they did with Albon putting him in too early. Try to give him two years at least in Alpha Tower, perhaps then trying to put him up into the Red Bull seat. But of course Perez would have to be absolutely dreadful at Red Bull for him to for that to happen. So Sonoda could perhaps be stuck at Alpha Tower for a little bit, but if he performs very well and of course he's got a pretty good benchmark there in in, in the other car there at Alpha Tower with Pierre Gasly. So Pretty, pretty. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how Yuki Tsunoda does. That's for sure. But I think it's going to be pretty, pretty similar for both of these teams compared to last year. I don't think they're necessarily weaker in terms of their driver lineup compared to last season. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think AlphaTauri are perhaps going to be getting Grand Prix victories. Although, I'm sure if they do get a Grand Prix victories somewhere, I'm sure someone will. We'll clip this and say, ha ha, look at this. They did. And prove me wrong. So it's going to be quite an interesting season for these two teams. And well, let's see how they do in the midfield. Yeah, I think, again, realistically, you'd have to say they're going to be about the same as they were last season. But let's hope that they are a bit better um, and a bit more competitive. Uh, next up, we'll go to Alfa Romeo. Uh, Alfa Romeo, who have already revealed their car. Um, a very nice looking car by the way um they should be definitely a lot stronger in 2021 not just because ferrari should have a lot more power with the power unit but also if you look at the end of last season alfa romeo were actually quite strong there was quite a few races where even though they would start towards the back of the field they had very good race pace and would end up coming through and finishing not too far away from points so I think, again, if they can just gradually improve things aerodynamically and have quite a bit more power, then they should get back to what they were like in 2019. Uh, I don't see them, though, fighting, you know, for the top five or top six in the constructors. I think, really, eighth place is where they're going to be. And then for Haas F1, I think Haas are going to struggle this season. One, because I don't really think the car is going to be any good and the drivers, I think, are going to struggle. Uh, not because they're bad drivers, but because I think Nikita Mazepin is, you know, he, I think he is in for a very tough time. And I think if he does start crashing and, you know, making mistakes, I think he will unravel. And Mick Schumacher, in his first year in a new formula, does tend to struggle compared to what he does after that. So I think they're going to struggle. And Williams... I think at best you'd have to say ninth in the constructors ahead of Haas if Haas really do struggle. But yeah, Haas and Williams, I think, will definitely be the last two teams um, in the constructors and in Alfa Romeo in eighth. Would you echo that, Nib? 
Uh, very much so. I don't really see these three teams challenging the other midfield teams to perhaps move up positions. You know, Alfa Romeo, you know, same lineup, boring. Giovinazzi, he was better last season, but I think that's because Kimi was dropping off a little bit as well. Probably Kimi's last season in the sport, but, you know, it's Kimi. He'll stay in the sport as long as he wants, basically. So let's see how Kimi does this year. It'll be interesting to see. And, I mean, Giovinazzi reckons he should have been at Ferrari. So <laughs> still can't believe he came out and said that he thought he should have been considered for the Ferrari seat. That That is quite hilarious. Um, so, yeah, probably Giovinazzi's last season. Uh, unless, you know, he, he really picks up his game before he gets replaced by Callum Eilat. Uh I don't really see how Alfa Romeo can improve. Who knows, they could they could absolutely do a madness. It, it could be one of those seasons, of course, with the floor changes. That That is going to mix up things a little bit, I think. The the changes to the floor, of course, you can't have all of the, the cuts and slots um, in front of the rear tyre. Uh, like you could in previous years. There's none of that. So I think that could change things quite a bit. Um, but for Haas, uh, you know, two rookie drivers. Mick Schumacher, as you mentioned, doesn't do quite too well in the first year. Of course, he, str- he didn't do too great in his first year of, uh, of F2 and even in Formula uh, Formula Europe and Formula 3 Europe. Uh, he didn't do too great in his first season until then. He went on an absolute charge in his second season there against Dan Tictum. Uh And then Williams. Well, I think that I think Williams are going to be closer to Alfa Romeo and uh, and Haas compared to what they were last season. I think George will be in in there amongst fighting with them. And then there's of course Latifi who will be. Uh, I mean, who knows? He might get a bit closer this season. He seems like a decent bloke, so I hope the guy does improve. So. Who knows what Latifi will be doing at the back of the field. He might be just daydreaming like he was last season. But uh, hopefully he's a little bit closer with everyone else there. But yeah, I don't I don't see too much changing for, for these three teams. I feel like they're going to be... I feel like they're going to be separated from the rest of the midfield teams. From Alpine, Alpine and all those other teams. So yeah, I think it'll be pretty similar for them. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Haas do... You know, Grosjean and Magnussen, two very solid midfield drivers who I don't think get enough credit. Uh, so putting in two rookies in the same seat is, is quite a big risk. But uh, I think uh, Good to Stein has come out and said even when the, it was announced that there were some of these two drivers at the end of last season, that they're going to give them a bit of time to see how they do. So it'll be almost of a, of a progress year for Haas to see. To see how things do, and then they could be much stronger in 2022. But yeah, that's it for the teams. It's going to be one hell of an exciting season. Hopefully, of course, it's going to be a bit more of an exciting start to the season, starting at Bar Raid instead of you know <laughs> my home Grand Prix at Albert Park. So hopefully, we do have an exciting Formula One season ahead of us. Yeah, I think you know, hopefully we will do. Now, what we're going to do is we're not going to do. Well, I'm. I definitely. I don't want to yet do a top ten drivers uh, championship prediction, but I do want to do a constructors top ten. Now, what I will do is I'll go first on that. Um, for my top ten as of now, what I think will happen. So top two, pretty easy. Mercedes first, Red Bull second. Third, I think will be McLaren. I think. I don't think they'll easily get third but i think it won't be i don't think they'll be getting it just about by the last race like they did in 2020 and then very close i think it will be ferrari fourth by like five points maybe 10 at the absolute most from aston martin in fifth i think it'll be very close between those two i think from mclaren to aston martin third to fifth you're talking what 30 35 points at most i think um and then yes yeah, sixth i would have to go for alpine really not necessarily because of the car or the team really just because fernando alonso i don't think they'll be worse than alpha tari i think alpha tari will have a good car but i think alpine even if they don't have that great of a car because they have fernando alonso That'll really help results-wise in 2021. So I think Alpine will get sixth. 
And then Alpha Tauri 7th, be very close between those two. And then as Nib said, the last three teams, I think, are going to be kind of the same. Maybe not exactly the same, but I'm going to go Alpha Romeo 8th. And then 9th, I am going to go for Haas F1. And then 10th, Williams. I think that, yeah, with the back three teams, unless I see Williams massively improve, I can't really say they're going to finish any higher than last. Uh, but yeah, I think, and I, you know, and I hope we do get a title fight this year, but I think the fight to look for, again, like 2020, is between third and maybe as far as sixth place in the constructors. I would say third, fourth, and fifth between McLaren, Ferrari, and Aston Martin. I think that is the fight in 2021 that I'm looking forward to the most between, I mean, look at the drivers you've got in there, Ricardo, Norris. Leclerc, Sainz, Bastian Vettel, Lance Stroll. And then, you know, let's say Alpine are a bit better than I'm expecting. You've got Fernando Alonso in there with Esteban Ocon. I mean, it's going to be a great, great season in that midfield pack. But yeah, I think I think McLaren third, Ferrari fourth, Aston Martin fifth is how it'll end up. Just need to stress, though, these are not our absolute final predictions. We'll be making those after testing. These, The reason we do these now is to see whether our predictions before the season are more accurate than our ones, you know, after testing. I think one year, mine were actually a bit more accurate before testing than after. Can't remember what year exactly it was, but I think one of them, it was a bit more accurate. But Nib, uh, what is your, before testing, what would you say your top 10 constructors uh, finishing order is for 2021? Well, just just to start off, I think I'm pretty sure I know what year that was. You know, oh, Ferrari have got that three tenth gap to Mercedes, and you know, before pre season <laughs> testing, you would you certainly wouldn't have gone with that. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I think I remember that. Okay, so I've gone a little bit different to you, just to make it interesting, because my initial ones were exactly the same as yours. So, we'll, we'll change it up a little bit just to make things interesting. So. Yeah, Merck and Red Bull first and second. Then I've gone for Ferrari in third. You know, I, I think I think they might get might sneak third. Then McLaren in fourth. Aston Martin in fifth. Alpha Tauri in sixth. I know that might be a little bit controversial, but you know, I just didn't want to be the same as you. So we've gone then Alpine in seventh, <laughs> which would be some drop off. Uh, then we've got Alpha Romeo in eighth. I'm gonna go Williams in ninth. I think George will get some points in a Williams uh, somewhere along the way. And I'm going to go with Haas in 10th. To be honest, I mean, I, I could see Alpha Tauri finishing 6th. I, I could definitely see Ferrari finishing 3rd. And Williams, you know, if, if you like you say, if Russell gets a few points here and there, I, I can see, definitely see that happening. Um, I think definitely if your finishing order happened, it would probably be a bit more of a mental season than if mine came true but um guys in the comment section let us know what is your gut feeling going into 2021 what do you think the top 10 finishing order in the constructors will be based off of i guess your expectations coming really from 2020 and of course we haven't had any running so far uh, as of of course recording this video for the 2021 season to really see who's good and who isn't, who's reliable and who isn't. Uh, so yeah, let us know in the comments section who is going to, you know, win the championship. I mean, there's going to be one answer to that, but especially from the third down to really P7, I'm very interested to see what you guys uh, think of that. But Nib, uh, thank you for coming on uh, for this podcast. And to be honest... Unless it's a mental season, I think we're both probably, with the predictions we've just made, I think we are both going to be almost spot on, don't you think? Yeah, well, we could we could be spot on or we could be absolutely incorrect. Um, James Allison, <laughs> of course, was saying, you know, oh, you know, we, the, check, the field could really change up with the, with the, new, with the new rules for, for this season with our... Uh, at least with the floor, he said that that could really mix things up, but I don't expect things to change all that off much. And of course, it's nice to do a podcast again with you. It's been almost two months since we've done a podcast. Time has, time has flown that quick. And of course, 
with the Formula 1 season starting relatively soon, we'll be doing a lot more podcasts and everything. So very much looking forward to the rest of the reveals and then eventually to pre-season testing and then, of course, the Bahrain Grand Prix. That's all happening this month because, of, as we record, well, for me, it's the it's the 1st of March. It's March already. How is it March? But, yeah, it's <laughs> nice to talk Formula 1 again with you as per usual. And uh, excited to see some more Formula 1 action just in a few weeks' time. Yeah, the next few weeks are going to be very exciting, as you say. And I, I am really looking forward to testing. And especially with only three days of testing. I mean, we could have some pretty interesting stuff come out of just those three days and not that much running. So, yeah, we'll see when we get to testing. But, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, for more content like this don't forget to check out my last video that i did on the channel my last couple videos and as well you know hit the like button again comment down below what your early predictions for 2021 are when it comes to certain teams and drivers and uh when it comes to pre-season testing and podcasts there'll be plenty of those um, i'm sure coming in the next few weeks talking about again testing and then obviously once we get into the races that'll take care of itself so can't wait to see you guys for those particular things. And until next time, has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.